Okay, welcome back. So um, where, where we were last time, we left off, we had just caused the interrupt to happen. So the, the interrupt is now, um, we are getting into the interrupt service handler. So it is um, the, the timer to interrupt is um, on the, the input channel uh, off PA5 is causing an interrupt to happen. And so what we're going to do now is um, we're going to do something a little more intelligent with the actual um, data itself. And so we're going to, um, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to compute the period uh, by creating a callback function that gets called from the interrupt service handler. And so I want to demonstrate that. Now, um, you could make these modifications inside of the handler itself. Um, instead of using the callback functionality. But I want to demonstrate that because I think it's, it's, it's useful to understand that. Um, one of the STM32 sort of its um, um, design sort of um, approaches is to use these callbacks. And I want to show you how, how that works. All right, so let's come over to Cube. Um, here's where we left off. Again, this is that, that base project. All we've turned, done is turned on the timer input capture and it is uh, firing interrupts. And so let's go ahead and jump over to actually running it here. All right, so now when I, if I come back over to, let's see the interrupt handler here, I've got, an, I've got a, a breakpoint set right here. And so when I go ahead and run this, I'm gonna end up in that handler. Okay, so now let's go ahead and, and let's step into that and let's see what goes on inside this handler. Remember, what this, this how um, function is doing, this handler is doing, it is gonna go in and do some of the cleanup um, that needs to, be, needs to happen um, when an interrupt happens. So I wanna show you uh, by, by going into it, I'm gonna step into it here. What it's doing, it's it's going to um, set some flags. And then one of the things it's gonna do is it's gonna call this how time IC capture callback. It's gonna call that function. All right. Now, um, if you if you haven't defined that, um, th there is a weekly declared version of that. So let's go ahead and step into that. There's this weekly declared version of that set up elsewhere. So we're going to go ahead and create a version of that of our own in main so that we can go ahead and use it to um, override this one here because we want to do some stuff in here. So, so let's go ahead and I'm going to grab, I'll go, go ahead and grab the interface here and I'll come back over to main, come over here to remember to, uh, uh, be careful where you put stuff in here. Our cube will uh, summarily uh, get rid of it. Um, okay, so uh, there's our, our code. And so, um, yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and um, um, just put a, uh, let's put an instruction in here. So uh, um, if, And so remember, H time is coming in as one of these time handle types. <coughs> so I'm going to grab H time sub um, sub channel because you're going to uh, what you're going to have to understand here is is that for timer two, there's one interrupt for all the channels, and so you have to look to see which one it is. Now, in our case, we actually know. It's just going to be um, channel one. And how do we know that? That's the only one we've turned on. Uh, if you were to be building a more sophisticated, more complicated application, you might have more than one here. So, um, so let's go ahead and just make sure that we're getting the right one. Um, I'm 
create a few variables in here too. Um, Okay, so, so I've got this static variable here called last. And what static means is that it is a effectively a global variable. So it's only known inside of this function, but it works, um, uh, it works like a global variable in that it, is, it has persistent state. So unlike current here, um, last won't be created on the stack where it, it gets destroyed every time the, uh, the function exits. Currents, uh, current is of that kind where it gets created on the stack. So this will be a, a global variable, um, local namespace. So we don't have to worry about collisions of this name outside of this outside this function. So, but it's going to be persistent. So it'll 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 um, it'll persist across different calls. All right. So in here, um, I'm going to read the um, the current value of h times h time sub so instance. Let me, uh, let me stop this. We can go back over to the, uh, I, think, I think it turns off the helpers here. Makes it a little harder to, to do. Uh, last is less than equal to current. So in the in the um, normal case, our our timer is counting up, and so when the timer counts up, the assumption is is that in, in the sort of case where the timer has not rolled over, we would expect that the the current value would be um, would be greater than the last value, right? And so so it should just be a matter of um, subtracting off the last from the current. To get the period right, that should be our that's that's case one, and then um, oops, I've lost I've lost track of this here. Else period equals what? So in this particular case. I need to know what the timer is going to roll over at, what its rollover value is, and that seems that's a constant that's actually, or a register, I'm sorry, it's not a, it's not a constant, it's a register. It's time, time two, and it's called the ARR, or the auto reload. <coughs> so from the top of the timer, so it's counting up to the top, so whatever the last was, I've subtracted off that, so so that's the displacement to the top of the counter. And then I need to add in the, the current value. And that, that gives me the period. So in the case that the timer has rolled over in my, uh, as I'm operating here. Now, <coughs> at the bottom of this, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make the last value equal to the current value. And so uh, what's going to happen is, is that this variable period is going to be constantly updated um, based on um, the the, um, the the timer interrupt going off, so let's come up here, and I'm going to create a uh, private variable here. Unit thirty-two t period equal to zero. Actually, I don't need to give it a value. It'll, it'll, it'll get its value quick enough. So we've got a, a global variable called period. It's going to be referenced right here. And so let's... Um, 
Yeah, so let's go ahead and just uh, compile it and see what happens. Oh, didn't like something. Uh, I made a mistake here. It's not H time, it's H Tim. All right. Is that the only one I had a problem with? Yep. All right, cool. All right, so, so now we are, um, we are up and running. So the first thing I want to do here is just see... Am I even getting into this into this into this function here? So I'm going to toggle breakpoint, and so now I will. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and run it here. So I ended up there. So I run it again. Um, now I end up in my handler. Now remember. If you're looking for, you know, I'm setting breakpoints in these functions. If I'm looking for variables that, that depend upon the, the current and the last values of timers, the timer is continuing to run even when I'm stuck at a breakpoint here. So those values are not going to make any sense. And so I'm just suggesting don't, you don't need to look at them here. It's not going to, it's not going to tell you anything. Um, but what we know now is that we are indeed getting into these um, th these functions, and so um, yeah. So I, I think that for this for this video, I think that may be enough. And then <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll um, we'll come back next time and we'll start to try to make sense of these periods and uh, and, and look at the actual variables that are that are coming out of these. All right, more next time.